Hey friends, welcome to our homestead. This little box right here is a huge blessing to off-grid solar users and enthusiasts like myself. This is the EG4 battery firmware adapter and it's used to update the firmware on your EG4 batteries. And it's particularly useful for those of us who have small solar installations way out on their homestead or on their off-grid property and you don't have internet access out there. So as we all know, batteries sometimes need firmware updates. I know that's annoying, but this is very helpful. In our solar shed, we have some EG4 LLS batteries and in our house, we have some wall mount batteries. I'm gonna go through the steps with you on how to use this to update them. Let's get going. Okay, we're back inside in front of one of our wall mount batteries, which we are gonna show you how to update as well as the LLS that I have out near the barn. Now this is way easier than using a laptop because you can just download the firmware onto this and have it ready to go for every single battery of the same type. What that means is if you are updating a 280 amp hour wall mount, indoor wall mount, you need to have that specific firmware update on here and it can only fit one firmware update. So say you need to update your 100 amp hour wall mount like up here, you need to take off the other firmware and replace it with the new firmware for the 100 amp hour or whatever other type of battery you have. Now I do have to say that this is only used for EG4's newer batteries. So I have some older LL version ones and some older life power version ones and this will not work for it. Although they do have an adapter for those early batteries. So if you live way out in the mountains and you need to go to town for an internet connection, then you can download your firmware to this from the laptop at the coffee shop, whatever it is, and then use this to update all of your batteries. Now, if you've got different or mixed batteries like I do, then you're gonna have to take a couple trips to the coffee shop, but it's still easier than trying to do it from that laptop. Okay, let's look at what comes inside the box. Your firmware adapter or updater, whatever you wanna call it, and two cables, a power cable, and this is the download cable that you can drag and drop your um, files from your laptop to the updater, and also, your connection cable to the batteries. And this will work for both the RS-485 and the battery comms, which is the RS-232 port. Up here you see it says battery comms. That is the RS-232 indicator. And down here is the RS-485 indicator. The only difference between the two is they are different serial connections and they have different capabilities and communication. And these batteries use both. Okay, let me jump on my laptop and I will show you how to download the files you need for each batteries and how to get them onto the adapter. So to kick this off, you're gonna plug in the USB-C to the top of the adapter and then the regular USB to your computer. What that's gonna do is power this and give you the ability to transfer the files to it. And as you can see, I'm using a really old Mac. In the past, you had to have a computer that was able to talk to your batteries or your inverter. And it was a royal pain in the rear end. I actually had to buy a new computer just to talk to one of the new inverters that I have. But with this here, you can just transfer files onto an older computer and, or download them to the older computer, transfer them onto this, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, let's jump on the screen here and show you how to transfer the files. Okay, so we've jumped on EG4's website and we've gone to our products and batteries and you can find your individual battery here. If you click on that battery, say it's our indoor wall mount battery, we're gonna click here, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom under downloads, go to firmware, and then you can see I've got RS-45 firmware and RS-232 firmware. You can download either of those onto your computer. What I find is actually easier is go here to the search bar, it says Knowledge Hub, and just type in firmware. And that takes you directly to firmware for both inverters and batteries. You just scroll down and look for your battery and instantly hit download, wherever it may be. This is the LLS, and it will download it for you. 
So go to your computer and find where you downloaded your new firmware updates to, and you can see I've got the LLS, I've got the 232 for the indoor wall mount, and I've got the RS-485 for the indoor wall mount. You need to download those separately, and then the LifePower version 2 right here. Now, if I didn't mention earlier, this will only hold firmware for one battery type at a time. So whether that's the LLS or the wall mount or the 100 amp hour wall mount, it doesn't matter. You have to only do one battery type at a time. Okay, now that we have our firmware on our computer, we're gonna go and we're gonna open up our updater. And you can see it's located for a Mac over here under locations. It's this designation right here and you'll be able to figure it out on your computer. On our updated firmware, we only want .bin or .hex files. HEX is for RS232. Uh, BIN files are for RS485. So for our LLS firmware, we've got this 232.hex. We're gonna take that and drag it over to the updater. It's gonna copy it on there, and then we can go and update our battery. And then for the LLS, we're gonna grab the .bin file right here and drag it over also. Now, if you need to switch between batteries, you need to come back and obviously just delete these, take them off, and then drag on whatever you need. So we're gonna go back over here. We're gonna to go to our indoor wall mount. We're gonna look through the files here and we're gonna find, here's the hex file. We're gonna drag that hex file over for the indoor 280 amp hour wall mount. It's gonna get on there quick. We're gonna look for our indoor wall mount bin file, which is for the 485. And there it is right there. Okay, friends, we're in the solar shed. I'm going to show you how to update these LLS batteries. Please excuse the background noise of the air conditioner. It's 100 degrees outside right now, and I'm trying to keep this space cool. So we're going to first turn off the breakers on our batteries and then turn off the BMS on each battery. We're going to disconnect communications from the inverter, and then we're going to disconnect the communications between the batteries themselves. We're gonna to go to our first battery here that we're gonna update. So we need a way to power this adapter so we can update these. And some people use those small cell phone sized battery packs, but I've heard that those just don't have enough power. You can try them if you like, make sure they are charged to full. What we are gonna to use to power the adapter is this little Blue Eddy uh, power station that I've had for a few years. Should work perfect. It's got USB adapters, so we're just gonna pop it in there and turn it on. Now we've got power to our adapter. So up here in the top where it says BATCOM, that is our 232 update. So we're gonna plug that into the battery communications port, which is our 232 port. Now you need to pay attention to the dip switches. The dip switches need to be set to ID0. And ID0 is confusing because in the manuals, there is no ID0. It's either ID1 and 234567 and up, or in the case of these, I think it's ID16. Some go all the way up to ID64. So use either ID1 in the manual or ID64 or ID16. I'm gonna try it this way with the switches down, up, 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 up. We're gonna hit update. It's gonna flash and we're gonna turn on our BMS. It's gonna to continue to flash, hopefully for only about 10 to 30 seconds, I think is the update time. Now, some people have updated and they have not changed the dip switches and it's worked just fine for them. So it's up to you. Now you can see we've got success on our light. Now it's time to do our other LLS batteries. Just follow the same steps and I'm gonna try this next battery and not change the ID dip switches. Once you're done with the RS-232 update, or the BATCOMS, as it says, now we're gonna do the RS-485 update. 
So plug that end into the RS-485 port and then select RS-485. So we're going to use the exact same process that we just showed you on our LLS batteries for our wall mount batteries and any of the other batteries. Right here, we've got the RS-485 port. If you have the RS-485 selected on here, you'll connect it right there, do the update, you're all set. And for the RS-232, that is in the battery comms port. Select BATCOM or RS-232, plug it into the BATCOM, update it, see that you get this green success light, and you're all set. Remember, you need to take off or delete the LLS firmware that you put on here, replace it with the 280 amp hour wall mount battery firmware, and then you can update this. And if you want, you can play with those ID switches back there. It didn't seem to make a difference for us on the LLS batteries. Well, that's it friends. It's super easy, super simple. You just need this little adapter, a computer, head to town, download the information on here, update your batteries and you're all set. If you live out on a remote property or you have equipment that is far away from any internet access, this is a big help. If you have any questions about this, please leave them for me in the comment section below the video. Now go check out this series of videos right here, which is how we built that system, the Victron system, for our barn and well. Have a beautiful, blessed day. See you next time. Bye.